So if you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, you're probably aware of the amount of Astra Militarum tanks I'm currently working on. Or Imperial Guard if you're dealing old money. Now, I thought I'd share with you the really, really simple but very effective technique that I use to weather these at the first stage. Now, this technique I call the wash and buff technique, but it's also known as the gunk technique. It is an extremely simple way to weather your tanks. Anyone can do it and it gives really, really great results. So without further ado, let's crack on. So far I've airbrushed on the camo pattern. I've freehanded on the tank name and some uh, tank art. I've painted on the company markings. I've applied the Steel Legion transfers and the company number on the turret and on the other side. I've also dry brushed all of the gun barrels etc. So now to do the chipping. I'm taking a piece of foam from a carry case and I'm going to tear a bit off this. Now I will be using the torn edge as the bit that I use to do the chipping and the reason I do this is because it creates an ununiform pattern whereas if you were to use the sharp edge it would give a very boring and unnatural look. So now I'm going to use Vallejo Model Air steel. You can use any silver or any metallics to do this. And all I do is I dip the sponge into the paint and then dab off a fair amount of this paint just to make sure that the sponge isn't too overloaded. So with the paint on the sponge I gently dab it onto the model. I concentrate on the edges but because of the shape of the sponge it will overlap onto the actual panels and create little chips along the, the flat panels which look quite natural. One of the great side effects of this technique is that the chipping acts as an edge highlight and takes out what would actually be a really, really time consuming process on a tank this big.
So just note here where the the little gap between those rear compartments is, I take the very very sharp edge of the sponge and just sort of almost drag it down between the two lines to give a edge highlight between the two. So when I tear the foam, I try to do this at an angle and that way you end up with a flat edge on one side and a more pointed edge on the other side. So you've essentially got one tool that would deal with everything. So another component of this technique is a little bit of bravery. You'll see here that I freehanded a devil's face and a fancy name on the side. And all I'm going to be doing is taking silver paint and weathering around it. Now obviously you need to take a little bit of care here, but don't be afraid to weather a little bit onto work you've done before because it just adds to that natural look. So you'll also notice that around areas such as the the front at the very bottom of the, the tank and around the tracks, I tend to be a little bit more liberal with the chipping. Um, obviously this is because these areas would take more of a beating from the environment. And there we go, all the chipping done. So following all the chipping being done, I've run a bit of clear varnish through my airbrush and coated the entire tank and I've done this to protect the paint but also aid capillary action. You'll also know that I've put a piece of paper down because this stage does get very very messy. So the paint I'll be using here is some Windsor & Newton burnt umber oil paint mixed in white spirit which is also from Windsor & Newton but any white spirit will do. I just got a good deal on this. Now I mix it into a cup and you'll see it's quite thin however it is very opaque as you'll see here when I put it onto the paper. So all I'm going to be doing is taking the oil paint and literally painting it over the entire of the tank that's already been painted. You'll also note I'm wearing gloves. Now this is obviously because white spirit's not particularly great for your skin. Make sure that you get the oil into all of the crevices if it's not going in naturally. My 
my preferred brush here is a natural head brush but very coarse you can buy them from any artist store it's a uh, perfect for oil paint Another instance where you need either a little bit of bravery or stupidity is you paint oil paint all over your nice shiny freehand. you've covered the entire tank with the oil paint you then need to just blast it with the hairdryer to dry it so now the oil paint is dry you take a lint free cloth and it's very much up to you as to what you use here but I just use an old duster So essentially you will have the model do most of the work here, take the rag and begin to rub the paint off. It will take the paint off the more raised and exposed areas. There may be instances where you want to get the rag in a little bit more, but for the most part you don't really need to bother. It really is that simple. Just a rag rolled up into a ball and gently buff the oil paint off to reveal the paint job underneath. I also think that this technique would work quite well just off a base coat camo pattern rather than one that's been given some sort of colour modulation like I've done. So you will have instances on some tanks where you just can't get the rag in, such as here around this front sponson. So in this case I take a cotton wool bud or a q-tip or an earbud, however they refer to it in your country 
and just use that instead. Sometimes I'll soak it in white spirit, but usually I'll use it dry. So hopefully that's shown exactly how easy this technique is and that you're going to be able to use that technique to get some really great results yourself. So until the next video, 
Happy painting and take care.